Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, I have another video for the iOS hacking and security research playlist on this channel, which I've not done a video for for quite a while now. Uh, many of my recent videos have not actually been sort of technical exploit development stuff. So we're gonna get back into that with this new video today. And in this video, we're gonna be looking into a macOS kernel vulnerability. Um, we're not gonna be fully exploiting it, but we're gonna be looking into the vulnerability into the source code and seeing how the vulnerability occurs. And then I'm gonna kind of go through it, analyze it a little bit and actually replicate it, recreate the vulnerability to show you guys how this could be exploited. So the particular vulnerability we're gonna be looking at is an information leak in the kernel. So it's not a uh, memory corruption, it's not a, an, it's not a vulnerability that's gonna give us code execution, but it is still a vital component in any exploit or in a jailbreak, um, because obviously if you've seen other videos in the iOS hacking and security research playlist, then you'll know about ASLR and the effect of ASLR on a binary and how an information leak can be used to actually defeat ASLR. So if you haven't already, uh, then go ahead and watch um, one of the videos in this playlist. It does explain how ASLR is defeated, uh, but uh, I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you want to see that. Um, but anyway, we're gonna, let's go ahead and get started. So I actually came across this vulnerability while reading some slides from, from a security conference online. So the security conference, uh, sorry, the, the presentation uh, that I was looking at is uh, eat the core of an apple, how we analyze and find bugs in macOS and iOS kernel drivers. So this is by um, Jialong Bai and uh, Min Spark Zen. I'm not sure if I pronounced them correctly, but you probably heard of these guys before. They are um, quite actively tweeting about um, iOS security and exploitation, stuff like that. Um, and I came across these, these slides and I was looking through because I was obviously interested in um, finding bugs in IO kit, uh, and iOS kernel drivers. So um, I was looking through and I got to a certain point where they actually analyzed two real world bugs. So they analyzed an info leak bug and a code execution bug. Now the info leak one, as I said, is the one we're gonna be focusing on in this video and understanding exactly how this works. So if we scroll down, uh, they, they obviously talk a little bit about actually finding the bugs and then we get to this section here, it says new vuln number one, and they cover and they show the source code to a vulnerable um, IO kit kernel extension. So you can see here, it says information leakage due to uninitialized stack variable. And this will come in, uh, this will be important in a minute because this is the specific class of bug that this is. And it's found in the IO Firewire family uh, driver and it's been assigned this CVE. And as, as it says there, it's uh, used to defeat KASLR. So the next few slides actually show various source code snippets uh, illustrating what this vulnerability is and how it works. So we're gonna go through this to, uh, so you guys understand exactly what is going on here and why this code is vulnerable because obviously it's quite um, it's quite an interesting uh, task to go through source code and actually see a vulnerability just sitting there in the source code and to understand exactly how it works because obviously that could then potentially be used to apply to your own research if you are ever looking into bug finding um, and you, you, it's good It's good practice, I suppose. So here is uh, the first slide where they show a code snippet here. So what we basically have is um, an uninitialized stack variable, as it mentioned here. This is the whole class of bug. This is what creates the vulnerability. So an uninitialized stack variable is a variable that's placed on the stack but has not been given an initial value. So for example, if you were programming a simple application in C and you create an integer variable, so let's say we have an int i, if you don't then assign that a value, so for example, int i equals zero, if you don't assign it a value, if you just do int i and semicolon to end that statement, then that variable is uninitialized. So it's been put on the stack, you're not, you're not using a pointer, so you're not doing this on the heap, um, but it's been put on the stack, but it's not yet been initialized. Now this is actually fine, you're allowed to, you can obviously do this, it's safe programming practice, as long as you do then initialize it because otherwise, as you'll see, we, we have potential for an information leak. So in this case, in the source code snippet, the uninitialized variable is this user object handle. So it's been underlined here in red. So it says user object handle, and then this variable name out, ha uh, out channel handle. And you can see they've just put a semicolon there. It's not been initialized with any kind of null value. It's just been created on the stack. So this is an uninitialized stack variable. Now what happens is they actually do try to initialize it, obviously. There are actually a couple ways you can initialize variables in C. You can either set a value to them directly by, as I said earlier, int i equals zero or whatever value. Um, or you can actually pass the variable to a function, but pass it by reference. And then that function can be responsible for assigning it a value. So when the function returns, the, the caller function is expected to have received um, that variable, variable back, but with now a value in it. So 
this is exactly what happens. So this uninitialized variable is created out channel handle. And then this function here is called it's uh, ISO CH channel create. And this is passed, you can see the out channel handle is passed into this function, but by reference. So you can see we have this ampersand in front of it. This is for by reference. So what we're doing is passing the actual address of this variable uh, to the function. So this is different from passing the actual value. If you put an ampersand, it passes the address of the variable. And this is because this function here is actually expected to um, assign a value to the variable. Uh, but we'll see in a minute that that's actually not the case. So after this function call, you can see um, we set um, the, the out channel handle uh, to some structure that's then eventually returned to user space, which is when the attacker can actually see that data. So what should really happen is this variable is declared, it's sent to this uh, function, it's then given a value and returned to user space and it should all be fine. But what we'll now see is if we look and follow the code path through, so basically the next screenshot here shows ISOCH channel create, it shows the function for that. So you can see there, channel create. And you can see there it takes in the pointer to that out channel handle. And what it does now is it passes it to another function, it passes it to the add object function. And now this is this next screenshot here shows the add object function. Again, it's passed through here. And here is where the vulnerability occurs. So this function should be assigning a value to this uninitialized variable so that it doesn't just have a random value. It needs to be initialized with a proper value. But you can see, first of all, in this function, there are some checks on capacity. Now, bearing in mind, I don't, I don't actually know anything about this kernel extension, so I don't know specifically the context of what this all means, but the overall idea of an uninitialized stack variable bug is pretty much the same in all cases. So uh, if you do know about this, then obviously you understand this more than me, but for whatever reason, there is some form of check going on on a capacity against a, some kind of capacity limit. So for example, you can think about this, if they call this function multiple times, the whatever the operating system is trying to do, it has a limit on how many times it's gonna have this uh, operation happen. And therefore, if that limit's reached, it doesn't wanna do it anymore. So you can see this if statement here uh, is checking new capacity. Uh, it's checking if it's greater than this particular value. And if it is, it sets it back to that value. And then it does another check here, if the capacity equals the F capacity, now I'm assuming this means that it's uh, it's reached its limit in whatever context this actually is. Again, I don't actually know the context completely, but uh, if it does reach this capacity limit, then you can see that they've commented, it says can't grow. And this line has been underlined. Now, if this is the case, then you can see this is what happens. We have uh, the error uh, is basically the function will return um, without actually assigning a value to the uninitialized variable. So you can see here again, then they show actually a disassembly and they show how you can calculate the kernel slide from this now. Um, but yeah, so we have this uh, issue now, obviously in this context of a, a driver without fully understanding the driver and how this is all implemented and what these functions are actually doing, it can be kind of overwhelming to try and understand exactly what's happening. So what we're gonna do instead is look at an example program. We're gonna recreate a similar vulnerability that uses an uninitialized stack variable. And we're gonna write this in a basic C program and kind of understand exactly what goes on. And I'll show you exactly how this would work. So what I've done is I've created a program uh, called uninitialized stack variable. And we will just open this up uh, in Atom, which is actually my new favorite text editor. I've been using this a lot more recently, uh, more than even Xcode. Um, just because of the, the nice uh, syntax highlighting they give you. But anyway, so here is this short program. So what it does is basically a very oversimplified version of a similar kind of condition to what that kernel bug gives you. So we have in the main function, uh, it asks you to enter a number. It asks the user to enter a number. This number is then read in through scanf. And then what we do is we have our uninitialized stack variable. So here it's just an integer. So it's not any kind of complex structure or object. It's just an integer and it's given the name value. And you can see there, we don't have any initialization, it's just declared. Um, then we call set num, which is a function up here, we'll get to in a minute. And we pass in number, which is the number the user entered. And we also pass in the uninitialized stack variable by reference, as I mentioned before, using the ampersand before it. So this passes in the actual address of this integer variable. And then what we do is after this function call, we then will assume that this value has been given, a, this uh, integer has been given a value, and then we try to print it out on the screen. So we print value equals, and then use that in the format specifier. So what this uh, set num function does is it takes in, as I said, the number and a pointer to a value. 
and it has a similar kind of check as the kernel uh, driver did. So what it, in this case, what it does is it's been oversimplified, obviously, so it's easy to understand, but we have number, if number is greater than or equal to limit. Now limit is defined as 10. Uh, if that is the case, then we print an error, limit has been reached and we return. Now this will return back to main, but you'll see that we haven't yet done anything with the value uh, of the value variable. So uh, what should actually be happening is if this is being returned uh, due to this error, we should all, we should always still be setting value equal to some value zero or some null value. So it is at least been given an initial value because otherwise, uh, as we'll see in a minute, it's going to be possible to leak value uh, leak, leak memory. So, um, but yeah, if that is not the case, so if the user does enter a valid number, so about a number less than 10, then that's fine. This check is passed and then we set the value of uh, the value variable to a number. So in this case, 4141, and then that's then returned back and then we can print that off. So that should be, uh, that should work. So assuming that this was a real program, what the programmer should have done to actually keep this as safe as possible is to initialize the value variable with just a value of zero if this error was actually reached. So you can see here before the return, they probably should have put in this statement here that just gives it a, a value of null or zero so that it at least does have an actual value rather than it just being uninitialized still. But obviously that wasn't the case here and it wasn't the case in that vulnerable kernel driver as well, which is why this vulnerability was born. So we're gonna see exactly how this works now and uh, what we can leak from it. So if we actually go in terminal here um, and I'm gonna quickly compile this program and we're gonna run it. So USV, so it says enter a number. Now we're gonna first of all try it with a normal number, so below the limit, which is 10. So we'll just go for uh, nine. And you can see here, this actually works fine as we expected. So to recap, the uninitialized variable, or the value variable, this is passed to the function. The function then initializes it with the value. And then once the main is returned, once it's returned back to main, main is gonna print that value out on the screen and it's all fine. Now we're gonna run it again uh, with 11 or actually 10 would work as well uh, but you can see here this time we don't have a value of zero or we don't have a value of 414141 we have some strange looking number which is coming directly from the stack so we've actually successfully managed to uh, create an info leak um, and leak some data from the stack now in this case this is not really any uh, inf uh, any useful information to be honest but it's coming from the stack which proves there is an information leak vulnerability there uh, with the case with the actual kernel driver one, you can read this next slide and they show some annotations on the disassembly and the assembly snippets here and show how they actually calculate the kernel slide from this, uh, which as you may know, uh, means they have defeated the kernel address space layout randomization. Um, and that's how that's how powerful this type of bug was. So you can see there, um, this is just, as I said, it's been randomly printed out from the stack. So if you did have a more complex program uh, with other things going on, then it's probably quite likely that you would have, uh, you'd be able to leak some more important information. So for example, if any function pointers or any interest in data structures had been previously stored on the stack um, and their data remained behind, then you could potentially leak some of that data and um, yeah, be able to work out some cool things from it. So that is kind of a simple recreation of that uninitialized stack variable bug, just to kind of highlight how it would work without having to deal with the actual um, the context of this kernel driver, which would take uh, quite a lot of time to actually sort of work out exactly what it's doing. So this sim more simple implementation of a, a vulnerability is uh, hopefully hopefully better for the demonstration purposes. But yeah, so that is uh, uninitialized stack variable vulnerabilities and how they work. So I thought this was quite an interesting video to make because I've obviously covered various different exploit um, kind of topics before, um, but with regards to information leak vulnerabilities, the only one I've ever really talked about, I think, is format string vulnerabilities, which is one of the, the most basic ones you learn about and it's kind of not really common in real world software. So uh, at least in, in the modern software. So this is much more um, kind of a likely situation that you come across. So I thought this would be quite an interesting video to make. So I hope you guys learned something from it. Um, if you want to learn more about exploit development and other types of vulnerabilities, including lots of memory corruption vulnerabilities, then check out the rest of the videos in the iOS hacking and security research playlist, as I mentioned at the start of the video. There's uh, quite a lot of stuff in there that I've put together over the last uh, couple of years. Um, also, uh, check out my set of um, ARM exploit challenges, uh, which you can find on GitHub. So if you go and search uh, GitHub um, Billy Ellis, you will find my GitHub page. And on here is my exploit binaries. Uh, these, you may have heard me mention these in other videos, but if you're new to the channel, these are 
small programs that are vulnerable to different types of vulnerabilities that you can then reverse engineer, learn about and exploit them yourselves to kind of build up some knowledge and practice. Um, and also if you want some kind of help with those uh, challenges, then you can actually get um, my books. Now these books are actually at the moment on sale for Black Friday. Uh, so obviously this, this sale is actually gonna end today. So if you're watching this um, further into the future, which the majority of you are gonna be watching, then you can still get these. Um, they're still relatively affordable, uh, as is uh, that's the aim of these books. They're very short sort of beginner guides um, to exploit development on the ARM architecture. So go ahead and check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much it for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any more questions um, regarding any other topics to make videos on, so possibly um, a topic, a video, a video covering the second vulnerability um, in this uh, in these slides that they mentioned, then let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.